Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to continue further in our series on disaster management. Today we are going to talk on desertification and disaster in desert ecosystem and for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is a renowned professor of uh, geography and he is teaching in a Delhi School of Economics. He is a uh, admired and studied by the students uh, worldwide and uh, his precious inputs to the topic would definitely help us out in understanding today's topic in detail that is desertification and disaster in desert ecosystem. So let's welcome our guest Professor R.B. Singh and let's try to have in-depth knowledge on today's topic. Hello sir, welcome to the lecture. Thank you Gitika ji, <coughs> welcome viewers. Today we are going to discuss <coughs> desertification and disaster taking into consideration of desert ecosystem. Desert ecosystem is one of the marginal regions of the world, more specifically in Indian situation and desertification is a human problem. I would like to bring before you various processes related to desertification. It is a synthesis of over cultivation, over grazing, over irrigation and overall use of natural resources. Here I would like to put before you dry lands across the planet and in this map you can find the different area classified as hyper arid particularly the two type of situation, it is a more hot and also the few uh, cold, arid environment, semi-arid environment and dry sublimate environment. And you can find here also that we have in, in India all of them, you know, available. Desertification and land degradation can go one hand in hand and particularly I would like to put before you here extent of global land degradation and you can see how much we have land degradation particularly in the Asian region and the South Asia and more specifically in India. We have almost uh, around the 50 percent area under the degradation. In uh, uh, very uh, less area, you know, 5 percent if you will consider the part of the Canada or Australia, uh, they have less degradation or some part of Europe, but overall we have the in United States or the central part of Latin America or even the western side and the southern side of Africa, then South Asia, Southeast Asia also we have adequate you know de uh, degradation process. It is better appropriate to identify the dry lands and it is usually the ratio between annual precipitation and the mean annual evapotranspiration categorizing the uh, dry lands. So you can see here subhumid zones and this ratio 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, semi-arid 0 0.2 to 5 and arid zone 0 0.03 to 0 0.20 and hyper-arid zone it is less than 0 0.03. So in subhumid zone generally found you know tropical region, in semi-arid region annual variability is 20 to 50 percent. Arid zone, you know, annual rainfall variability, particularly here you can mention is a great variability between the 50 to 350 millimeter and hyper arid zone area with very low and irregular seasonal rainfall. Then what is desert? I would like to take up the UNESCO 1977 when water gained by the rainfall is below water potentially lost by way of evapotranspiration, then it is known as dry land crisis. So very simple way I can explain when precipitation is less than potential evapotranspiration it may be considered as a dry land. Among these conditions a specific type of 
relates to what we call arid area. It is a more uh, dry area which when coupled with the presence of dunes and so that is why it is called the desert uh, is a, 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 due to the presence of the dunes of sands. Dry land support about 40 percent of the total population in area 47 percent of the total on the surface of the earth. This is a broad figure. Type of desert I would like to divide into this the two category generally a hot desert and the cold desert. Differences between the hot and cold deserts are in terms of temperature actually only. Like you can see hot desert the few important characteristics I would like to mention arid, semi-arid and hot area with rainfall less than 25 centimeter and you can find this type of situation in uh, Rajasthan. The examples of these desert include those of you know great desert like Sahara, Arbian, Great Sandy and Thar. Cold desert it is also has a arid semi-arid cold desert with less than 27 meter uh, centimeter of rainfall. The example of such deserts include Gobi in China, Ladakh in India, Siberia in uh, uh, Russia and here, here I would like to put before you the 10 largest desert this the area Antarctic this uh, is a type of a continent Arctic desert Sahara desert particularly in Africa Arbian desert in Middle East Gobi in Asia particularly in China Kalahari in Africa Patagonia in South America, Great Victorian Desert like Australia, Syrian Desert in the Middle East area, Great Basin Desert in North America and then finally you can say the third desert like India. Desert ecosystem and three important component I would like to put before you, physiography and you can see this the condition, terrain condition are variable range from a tropical dune field to interdunal field to rocky landscape, then vegetation, very meager vegetation, uh, geophytic type of uh, vegetation pattern and uh, this uh, dune formation also is there and land is totally unproductive. Climate, climatic features you know includes you know less rainfall, high temperature, uh, in this situation high range of diurnal uh, 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 temperature. Now you can see from this map the total sub uh, uh, desert area, the arid land, uh, less than where we have 25 percent of centimeters per year the uh, rainfall and such area you can find in part of India, also China part of Africa, in part of Australia, some part of Latin America and the, uh, also in uh, this uh, North America. And actually I would like to bring before you the some of the important characteristics here. Generally you can find in the western margin of the all these desert exists. Now here I would like to put the comparing the hot and cold deserts and so that is why we have you can understand from your own perception the such dry, uh, dry land environment itself may be considered as a disaster prone region. Hottest, driest deserts lie on either side of the equator of the uh, tropic. The world major uh, deserts Sahara and Kalahari are found around the tropic of Cancer and uh, Capricorn. Hot desert receive the moisture they get in form of rain, daytime temperature in Sahara to reach almost 50 uh, degrees sometimes centigrade. And you can see this the type of water we get in uh, uh, dry area, water is essentially very very important it is considered gold in the and, and you can also see in our desert area how this the due to the Indira canal project when we grow, uh, uh, brought water, how we are able to change the total ecology of the region. So you can see this, the some falls as rain and feel dry river bed, some uh, uh, deep underground also the pound. Then also we have the flora and fauna and 
some we have nest, desert national park also in India like it suppose uh, not so high like a humid condition or like in northeastern region or the northern part of our country, but it supports very little but often very high biodiversity including the animals. Uh, some fauna includes kangaroo, rat, uh, rabbits, lizards, some flora includes shrubs, uh, prickly pears and uh, uh, bushage. Some plants are uh, uh, leathery leaves so that the water does not evaporate. So, uh, you know, these are the some of the, but some plants they have the deep root, root system. Now you can see this the desert fauna, uh, you know, available in different part of the world. Now I would like to bring before you the important characteristics like a soil. And soils, you know, generally characterized by the low levels of fertility, uh, uh, more existence of the dunes and the uh, 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 sands, uh, uh, no very little fertile lands, very highly sandy area, you know, 74 to 84 percent, clay only you can found in 1.8 to 4.5 percent, silt, you know, 0 0.4 to uh, 1.2 and carbonate 0 0.6 to 0 0.5 percent. So, you can understand the type of the and so that is why we have the uh, frequent desert, uh, desertification and drought is a very frequent phenomena and drought accelerate the process of desertification. Now here you can see how uh, drought used to bring this problem like because drought induces overgrazing, over cultivation, tree use for the fuel and the shelter. There are mainly four main factors identified for desertification. And so that is why it is called the, it is a synthesis of over cultivation, over irrigation and other factors. Drought, you know, is used to bring a lot of problem. Not only lack, lack of productive, uh, 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 productivity or, uh, you know, food, lack of production, but lot, lots of soil fertility, we have direct distribution to our desertification, a long period of without rainfall and you can find in this time even sometime lot of people you know coming with the uh, sheep to the uh, humid area. So they move to, towards the uh, semi-arid area with their cattle you know they come to even they sometimes they go to the UP and Bihar, you know, uh, with cattle, they migrate. So, out migration is a very, very important phenomena in the uh, thing. Over grazing, you know, is a very, because <coughs> grazing area is declining and we have the more increase of the total grazing animals. And so, you can understand this animal in great number feeding uh, and we have to feed and so we are feeding vegetation. A vegetation loss means a loss soil is exposed to the agents of erosion, soil is then washed away and blown away due to the very high uh, wind. So, uh, uh, this is a very overgrazing is a big problem in the uh, Indian desert region, particularly the uh, western Rajasthan. Over cultivation, you know, uh, particularly responsible because many crops being grown on the land year after year, we have the very high intensive land use, no rotation of crop, crops take up all the nutrients from the soil, soil becomes infertile and nothing can grow in this uh, region. And so we are losing the productive land and you can find the one can see a very due to even over cultivation and over irrigation also we are getting the lot of land degradation. Even I would like to give you a statement that the one third of the irrigated area of the world may be considered as a uh, degraded area. Here you can see this the, the over exploitation of vegetation. We have in the northern side on the western side the part of Haryana and then, then the part of Gujarat and then in between we have the some semi arid situation. So, desertification, I would like to put the few important statistics, you know, 24.8 percent of the country geographical area is 
undergoing desertification. So covering not only the Rajasthan but Gujarat and part of Haryana and also the part of you know Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. Water and soil erosion are major causes of land degradation. Water erosion is most prominent in agricultural regions. The key anthropologic uh, factors of degradation, unsustainable agricultural practices, di uh, diversion of land to development program, industrial effluents, mining and deforestation, unsustainable resource management practices, drive desertification and, and accentuate the poverty of people affected by desertification. So category of desertification if you will see there are certain category to desertification process it is a very very important such categorization because then we have take we can take up the high you know degraded very severe or the severe desertified area particularly for the planning purpose and for the rehabilitation so you know we have light degradation modern degradation and then severe to so very severe desertification particularly the area uh, west of harauli Vulnerability of land to desertification process, here you can see this the map and different type of the uh, characterization has been there, uh, uh, sand movement, you know, particularly this phenomena is more prominent in the, uh, this Jaisalmer district. Then we have the alluvial and residual uh, surface, you know, area, little bit eastern side of the, uh, this uh, great Indian desert and then part of the Maharashtra and also to uh, uh, Karnataka. Life degradation in this type slightly damage occurs in vegetation cover and soil and you know I would like to put before you this due to the animal and I would like to put like a sheep and the goat these two are the very very high number particularly in the uh, Western Rajasthan and goats are considered as a very, very dangerous because they uh, take out the plant from the deep root, you know, uh, from the below the surface also. So that is why generally they consider as, as a very, very uh, dangerous. The damage, however, does not affect the biological capacity of environment and can be neglected, particularly in the light degradation. But in moderate degradation, you know, medium degree of damage, uh, you know, a small dune formation also found, production is reduced by 10 to 25 percent, result in also the sometime due to the irrigation, the salinization of the soil. Then we have severe desertification, particularly the shrubs in the posture at the expense of desirable, you know, and wanted uh, species, followed by increased erosional activity, you can find we, we have the high speed wind, you know, uh, eroding this the, uh, lot of the uh, land surfaces followed by increased erosional activity and production here is reduced by up to almost the 50 percent. Then, you know, a very severe land degradation, this type of the category uh, composition of active necked great land sand dunes occur in formation in many uh, uh, groups and valleys. There is the greatest salinization soil in the category. Degradation of the soil is over 90 percent and usually to the extent of even 100 percent and productivity a very less, you know, in very severe desertification. It requires also the lot of investment for reuse. Land usage, you know, this pattern of land use in this, the desert is of somehow the Forest, you know, very less, less than 2 percent, not for cultivation, 23, uncultivated land, uh, 19 percent, fellow land, 11 percent, net zone area, 43 percent. About 14, 69 percent of the dry land, you know, we have 20, 32 percent India total land is affected by the different type of the land degradation. And so one can see a very close relationship between the land degradation and the a desertification process. Uh, it is also characterized by very asparse and highly uh, variable precipitation in high evapotranspiration. Desert India could be classified in, into the hot and the cold desert as already I mentioned and given also the uh, uh, photograph and the uh, 
राजस्थान पंजाब हरियाणा गुजरात आंध्र प्रदेश एंड कर्नाटका दीज आर द एरिया यू नो ऑलमोस्ट कवरिंग द थर्टी सेवन डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ द नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू पुट बे फॉर यू द हियर द मैप एंड यू कैन सी अंडरस्टैंड दिस द टोटल एरिड सेमी एरिड सम ह्यूमिड एंड अदर्स टाइप ऑफ एरिया पर्टिकुलरली अदर्स इन द ईस्टर्न साइड देन वी हैव द सब ह्यूमिड साइड देन वी हैव द सेमी एरिड साइड and then the arid situation in the western so western arid and then we we move to the eastern side we get the other type and the more some humid type of the situation now i would like to put before you the some of the important statistics particularly the percent of the total geographical area under different type of uh, de- desertification and land degradation process water erosion almost 10% vegetation degradation almost 10% wind around 5% forest scattering 3 salinity alkalinity 1.6% mass movement 1.3% then water logging less than 1 rocky area barren less than 1% land degradation in the various states and you can see this the in not only in the uh, uh, gujarat and rajasthan but other area also you know like jammu kashmir 60% you know cold uh, due to the cold desert you know uh, then we have the north, north eastern side tripura nagaland mizoram manipur we have lot of area under the degradation and here you can see the degradation of the soil kajri prepared this map and you can see this the wind erosion largely in the western rajasthan vegetable vegetation degradation in the uh, humid area or the dry land area the water erosion particularly in the river the, along the river you know where and the humid area drought as you know we discussed that the, we have the lot of the problem of the drought and you can see this the, we have the more meteorological inadequate monsoon rainfall high temperature and evaporation and high wind speed water resources inadequate water availability high water lost in storage and distribution utility over exploitation of surface and the ground water and then one can see a uh, agriculture and crop yield relationship and particularly you, one can see the shift in the agricultural practices you know in some area where the people got water due to the canal system i think they are cha- they are uh, uh, bringing the lot of agricultural productivity and even the size productivity also got in the ganganagar district you know uh, which was a very very problematic district but it got also the lot of the productivity of the few crops you know due to the availability of the water crop damage due to erratic rain and pests sometime population rapid growth of population and animal this is a very usual characteristics in the region here you can see that the drought prone areas how we have and the desert development uh, program you know the area particularly considered for the desert development program and semi arid situation and dry land situation so one can see a very close relationship between drought prone areas program drought prone area desert development program with the dry lands and the semi arid region largely these are the more problematic regions of the where productivity of less now i would like to put you very popular figure you might have seen through the internet that rajasthan experience a record breaking drought in 2000 consider the worst in the 100 years and drought cause an acute shortage of water and uh, animal feed and here you can see a farmer looking the dry bed of the lake raj samand and you can understand the type of problem we have i think it is a very very in uh, 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 rare photograph you know but it is very common and popular you know very all over the world looking the impact and the how the farmer sitting on the uh, such you know situation in the late lake raj samand you know and you know lake raj samand you know uh, they also got the lot of the salinity and all different kind of the problems impact of the drought you know i already highlighted earlier but 
one very important impact I would like to mention that the land goes to absentee landlords. People migrate, migrate with cattle and particularly with the sheep. They come to Haryana, they come to uh, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and even some go to the Bihar. Uh, particularly the western district of Rajasthan are most affected by such type of the problem where the fodder availability is a big problem and sometimes they get from the neighboring states like Punjab and Haryana which used to supply fodder in normal years. Due to non-availability of water and fodder people have started leaving their unproductive cattle and there are reports of animal dying for hunger and the uh, a situation because of the low rainfall water availability is very very scarce and so that is why that is a problem but the due to the Indira Canal uh, project I think we got some water and we have. So water scarcity is very very important but increased cultivation because population is growing and people are having the more and more pressure on groundwater resources also and whatever the uh, surface water available. There is a major shift in the occupational per, uh, pattern, you know mining activity is also very very important. In Barmer and Jaisalmer 70 percent of the livestock population moved out due to the you know uh, drought and they migrate. They sometime then they when they have a good uh, 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 rainfall then they return. So due to malnutrition and infection the price of seed and goat even the fail sometimes that drastically one can see. Now you can see this the different type of the data here. The rainfall and number of affected villages uh, largely we had 1991, 92 then we had 85, 86, 87 also we had a, a very highest drought in the century and um, total affected cattle you know particularly 82, 83. And I would like to tell you that you know sometime we have a lot of uh, you know arrangement for the human being but not for the cattle. These aspects require a very, full, very careful you know uh, uh, drought uh, mitigation system. So what we can do? Reclaiming the desert, around the world deserts appear to be growing as land to the edges of the overgrade. So desertification processes might be reduced. Uh, by uh, uh, you know reducing the availability of land to support life. So, we can improve enhance the livelihood security by bringing the water and uh, so that we can change the flora and fauna of the region. So, that domestic animal agricultural crops and people can get. Then the greening of desert, desert ecosystem can be constructed by protecting the land. Uh, 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 so, greening desert region is a one of the very very important you know work. Now I would like to uh, stop here and uh, but with this photograph and you can understand uh, Nahargarh fort I am putting you, Jagar fort, Amber fort and why I, uh, I am putting here because disaster resilience structure constructed during the disaster event. During the drought for mostly constructed during the drought period in order to provide edges to the far, uh, wedges to the farmers. So you can see this that these all uh, heritage buildings were constructed and we have to protect such heritage also uh, 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 for uh, so the uh, we have uh, deforestation so I would like to end with this say deforestation today draw tomorrow and famine day after thank you with this note, thank you. So thank you so very much for giving us uh, this uh, session. Friends are requested to be with us as we are back after a short break and we are going to talk on desertification and disaster in desert ecosystem. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to the session. Friends, as you know that today we are talking on desertification and disaster in desert ecosystem. And for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is a renowned professor of geography and through him, we always get in-depth knowledge on various topics and issues. So let's welcome our guest, Professor R.B. Singh, once again. Hello, sir. Welcome to the session. Thank you, Gitya ji. <coughs> welcome, viewers. In continuation of our discussion on desertification and disaster in desert ecosystem, I would I, in this section I would like to put before you case study. And him, when I am putting word case study means I am taking the empirical evidences from India. And in India, generally our uh, uh, attention goes towards western Rajasthan, 12 district, west of Harawali, and then in other part also I would like to little bit discuss. You know, if you will ask me to identify the uh, uh, great Indian desert, so it is known as Thar deserts. Uh, it is the world 10th largest desert and seen covering a large area of 278,330 square kilometer. Of the total area 70 percent is in Rajasthan. 23 percent in Gujarat and 7 percent in the states of Punjab and Haryana. You know, third desert continued into the also the Pakistan, you know, uh, uh, and some part also there. When we discuss about the mitigation and initiative, particularly I would like to put before you the two important uh, initiatives taken, Club de Sahel and the plan of action to combat desertification. You know, Sahelian desert is a very famous and before Sahelian desert, largest drought affected people lived in India. Now we have a very high density of population and you see our desert is a considered the high, highly densely populated desert of the world. In other desert you can find the 10 percent, uh, uh, less than 10 percent per square kilometer, sometime 2, 3, 5. But in our, you know, sometime more than 150 people found in the desert. Many initiatives taken. I would like to mention about this, the Sahel Desert, the Nile Valley Project and New Valley Project. Personally, I experienced, I visited that uh, project and the, how they are able to bring the water and growing the different type of vegetable. They brought the engineers, newly you know, agricultural engineers to the that area and they are helping for growing and diversifying diversification of the agriculture. You will remember, you know, in 1977 UN Conference on Desertification, you know, and UN General Assembly also very took interest on this and the many initiatives taken, our Ministry of Environment and Forest is also responsible for this uh, now you can see here in the western Rajasthan, this map of western Rajasthan and these are the district you can see generally considered as a western Rajasthan like a Ganganagar, Hanumangarh, Churu, Jhunjhunu, Sikkar, Bikaner, Nagaur, Pali, uh, Jalor, Jodhpur, Bikaner and Jaisalmer. These are the district, 12 district west of Harawli generally considered as a, you know, here you can see the photo of uh, Thar desert, the Thar is derived from the T hull, the general term for region sand ridges. Now you can see here the extent of the Thar, how it is moving not only western Rajasthan but the part of Gujarat and also the part of Haryana and Punjab. About the Thar desert, I would like to put before you the few important characteristics. It is a words. 18th largest subtropical desert, mostly densely populated part of the world. India uh, exploded its first nuclear device in Thar Desert. It is the biggest wool producing area in India. There are 10 times more animal per person in Rajasthan than the national average. So you can understand the type of problem we are getting. Here three districts of Punjab like Firozpur, Faridpur, Bhatinda, four districts of Haryana, Sirsa, Hisar, Bhivani, Mahendragar, 14 districts of Rajasthan you can say, so 12 districts plus 
uh, 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 some uh, important districts you know like a Sirohi also sometimes they consider as a uh, under the this and 10 districts of Gujarat like Ahmedabad, Banskatha, Junagar, Jamalmer, Kach, Mahsana, Patan, Rajkot, Porbandar and Surendranagar district. Here you can see this the arid and semi arid areas of India and particularly in Rajasthan you can see 61.9 percent, Haryana 4 percent, Punjab it 4.6 percent, Gujarat 19.6 percent, Maharashtra is a less than 1 you know 0 0.4 percent, Andhra Pradesh 6.8 percent and Karnataka 2.7 percent. These are the broadly you know distribution of the landscape distribution if you will see then we have combination of hills plains with sand dunes, we have plains with hills, we have some marshes, sand dunes also uh, particularly I would like to mention the region of sand dune is the most spectacular you know in fact the sand dunes occupy almost 58 percent of the total desert area. Sand dunes may be divided into the two chain western part of you know Barmer, Jaisalmer and Bikarder district where up to height of 20 to 100 meter and then eastern part Bikaner Churu this is largely discontinuous nature and you can find the sporadic manner this is a, uh, distributed in Haryana, Gujarat and all. But one can see a recent dune formation I would like to put before you here the some we analyze the topo, uh, topo sheets, old topo sheet and the new topo sheet and you we can find the increasing tendency of sand dunes increasing and decreasing tendency of sand dunes in the region. Because 1920 if you analyze take the 1920 sand dunes and current sand dunes and if you will compare but if you uh, compare you can find the increasing and increasing of tendency of sand dunes. But if you will analyze the climatic data we cannot see much you know the uh, difference and all. So that is why you can say desertification is an anthropogenic problem. Mining activity is very very important and even uh, degradation start with mining the region account for greater uh, amount of lead, zinc, tungsten, phosphate, gypsum production, important source of mineral uh, like copper and limestone between 76 and 79 there was as much 86 percent area under mining of 50 different type of mi minerals. I would like to quote a man and Chatterjee, the existing mining regulation have taken into account only the systematic and exploitation of mineral deposit without any consideration for the after effect and here I would like to bring before you sequential exploitation. What do you mean by sequential? Sequential exploitation means generally you no know, contractor or we as an individual we can take out the uh, good quality of mineral area just uh, forgetting the you know bird type of the mineral. So hydrological degradation start with this type of problem. Population density is a very very important it is a almost the 100 you know uh, average. Population density in other desert area is hardly 6 to 9 percent per square kilometer but in our is a very high. In terms of live stock population the third desert display the wide variety of processing about 46 to 260 per square kilometer. Desert biodiversity you know here particularly uh, we have the mix of admixture of paleo arctic oriental and saharan elements in the biodiversity third has both the plant as well as animal species constituting invaluable stock of rare and uh, resistant germs plasm. You know many people try to classify and you know I would like to quote Runwal was 1983 first attempt to put together all the information about the known you know fauna of the Indian desert and reported about 1100 species from arid district of Rajasthan. Work of faunal dysentery in the third region gaps in research edited by Ghosh, Bakri and Prakash in 1996 
reported about 2043 species. Of these 60, 619 were uh, vertebrate, vertebrate while the rest were invertebrates. Environmental impact you know district has been increased by 3 percent, but if you compare the other part it is less than 2 percent 1.8 percent. Problem has been caused by increase in the livestock population and already we discussed the which is more than double than the human population. Despite the transformation of desert region grassland into the fertile land, the tune of 11 percent indigenous biodiversity is under threat because of can canal has changed the texture, moise, moisture and soil and hurt the vegetation composition also. Due to canal, about 33 percent area remains flooded which has not only altered the ecosystem but also has the responsible for increasing some type of disease, malaria, agricultural pest, weeds and other plant diseases. Many industries were established you know in particularly in Gujarat you know Kutch region have been discharging effluent and affecting the fauna of the region. Post this independence you know various projects have been undertaken like Indra Gandhi uh, Nahar Prayojana in Rajasthan state, a distributed of Sardar Sarwar project transforming total grass into the cropland thereby bringing you know if you will go to the northern part of the Jaisalmer district you know you can't uh, think that the, this area is under desert you know we have totally changed in the uh, ecology of the uh, desert ecosystem. So that is why you know finally I would like to tell you that we need conservation efforts. The Rajasthan state government has declared a number of areas protected in the third region. The idea is to provide protection to, of the Chinkara, Nilgai, Indian fox, Great Indian bastard, uh, Hawara bastard. The role played by the Bisnoi community and particularly for protection of Khijri is well known factor and it is very widely quoted and discussed in the uh, in conservation movement all over the world you know and most specifically particularly in our situation in India that the how uh, for protecting Khijri tree the how uh, many people died even for protecting a tree. So they are more in even uh, they can sacrifice their life for protecting the Khijri, they worship you know the Khijri, they, it provides the lot of need of the local people. Wind erosion index particularly here I would like to quote the Kajri and you can see uh, 40 and 80 you know they have studied and they have prepared the some index and we have extremely highly, highly area particularly in Jaisalmer and Chohar district very high in Phalodi, high uh, moderate in Bikaner, Jodhpur, Barmer and you know very low type of like in Sikar, Hisar, Ajmer, you know these are the or you can see this the Indira Gandhi canal project area. We found you know this brought a lot of the changes in the ecology of the area, lot of prosperity in the region but I would like to tell you that they also facing, they are facing the lot of problem, loss of the water from main canal to the field and so this is a very, very important aspect to protect how we can uh, protect and conserve this loss of uh, then waterlogged situation. In many area we have the lot waterlogged situation. Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, sometime this uh, waterlogged situation uh, posing a lot of threat and lot of land degradation area found in this water degradation area. Few minutes I would like to discuss about this the canal and Indra Gandhi canal starts uh, Harike bar barrage in Sultanpur few kilometers below the confluence of Satlaj and Bias. It consists of Rajasthan feeder canal with first 167 kilometer in Punjab Haryana and remaining 37 kilometer in Rajasthan. 445 kilometer of the main canal lie entirely within the Rajasthan. The canal enters Haryana from Punjab through Lohagar village of 
हरियाणा एंड इंटर राजस्थान थ्रू खरखेरा विलेज ऑफ द हनुमानगढ़ डिस्ट्रिक्ट इरिगेशन एक्सटेंट नो डाउट वी हैव ए लॉट ऑफ ब्रांचेज एंड वेरी लॉन्ग एरिया वी हैव इट ब्रॉड ब्रिंग्स द सरप्लस वाटर टू द रावी एंड ब्यास टू द रीजन लार्जेस्ट कैनाल सिस्टम एंड highly profitable and commercial farming system we are able to achieve particularly in the ganganagar hanumangarh region it irrigates about 6770 square kilometer in jaisalmer and 37 square in barmel district agricultural benefit due to uh, uh, the canal and positive impact in terms of agriculture has already been mentioned and we have the i i uh, like to hear mention that the cotton crops you can find a lot of cotton cultivation and productivity also we have very substantial grain crops initially they face a lot of problem but many times the agricultural graduate they move that area earlier you know no, mostly in the ganganagar people were nomadic type of people and they were not knowing how to irrigate and they face the lot of problem uh the in other parts of the semi arid and the northwest you know you can find the cultivation of the mustard cotton even rice is cultivated and replacing the sand there previously so what is the impact impact one can see in the form of salinity and the water logging and particularly i would like to mention that the usar land same land these are the existence in this region soil analysis shows that the soil suffer from an excess of calcium carbonate although the ph of the soil is not usually high the salt deposition is due to the faulty irrigation there is there also lies hard layer of gypsum at shallow depth this when coupled with the rise in the water table you know and particularly i would like to mention about the 60 25% of the total area but sand dune stabilization program were initiated by tree along shelter belt plantation along the railway line along the canal along the road uh, uh, surrounding to the uh, villages so variety of shelter belt program was started in 1965 under the you know uh, also the uh, uh, green area and Uh, arauli development program also the program consists of planting of shelter belts along the road canal this was do- not on, uh, done slowly slowly to increase greenery but also arrest the forward movement of desert so desertification is being uh, you know expansion of desert is being stabilized, stabilized through this process it is uh, uh, very important to court here the two institute very in turn those who are working in this area and particularly those who are doing research they can court icrisat international crop research institute in semi arid area particularly ne- located near hyderabad it is a international organization and covering area of 6.5 million square kilometer of land not only in india but more than 55 nation and they are able to provide the 2 billion people you know covering ikrisat helps to empower these people to overcome poverty hunger and degraded environment through better agricultural practices so they are putting before you know suggesting different type of the agricultural practices uh ikrisat has found in that the farmers of dry lands are quite you know to say full the couple with the inadequate policy you know they, it is possible to develop the resilient system main important program i would like to mention here resilient dry land system market institution and policy mechanism a uh, grain legumes raising securing the legume productivity for health income and sustainability they have developed the dry land cereals increasing the dry land cereals crop productivity to help and end the hunger because the hunger and the poverty and poor people live in this area i would like to also quote the our own national institute you know our government of india institute like a central arid zone research institute it is located near uh, in jodhpur actually 
they have a different division and from the division itself you will be able to understand the type of the work they are doing very great work particularly for de, uh, 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 checking the desert expansion and uh, uh, re uh, habitating the rehabilitation of the uh, uh, drought affected people. They have the division of natural resource environment, division of integrated land use management and farming system, division of plant improvement pro, uh, propagation and pest management system, division of livestock production system and rain management, division of agricultural engineering for arid production system and then finally division of transfer of technology and training particularly for production economy. So you can under you can understand that the I here I am giving the few important examples like for natural resource and environment we have program like integrated basic and human resource appraisal and monitoring, a special assessment of soil carbon and carbon sequestration, desertification assessment and mapping, assessment of soil fertility, a, a qualitative drainage basin you know analysis. If you consider the farming system, they also have a different type of the land use management. They are trying to integrate the agriculture system uh, and the farmland, not only the farmland, but grazing land and also the uh, uh, irrigated land. Agricult through agricultural engineering, they are now developing the non-conventional energy systems, uh, improved seed distribution system designing the different type of the harvesting devices. They are also have the post harvest you know uh, technology. Under transfer of technology you know they have capacity building, technology evaluation, on far assessment of improved technology uh, and uh, also they are doing selected uh, uh, dissemination of technology. Policy in the Indian context, you know, I would like to mention about the few like a program, Combatic Desertification, what this program is coming through the our international, you know, conference, UN conference on desertification. Then DDP, Desert, uh, you know, CDP, Community Development Program, DPAP, Drought Prone Area Development Program, and the uh, uh, here, you know, it is a very old during the fourth five year program, the such program started particularly looking the water management, sand dune stabilization, creation of wind breaks. Then, you know, uh, also they are looking the optimization of uh, natural resource management. Desert development program has a several other component it started in 77-78, particularly it, it is started because of the UN conference on desertification. Apart from combating desertification, the main was also to maintain the environmental and ecological balance. Also, they are mitigating the drought uh, so that they can improve the land productivity, livestock and the human productivity. Uh, you know, national action program, you know, simultaneously they are also moving and it is under the Ministry of Environment and Forest of Government of India. And it is a 20 years program, particularly they are looking the community based approach to development activity to improve the quality of life for local community, awareness raising, drought management and self governance also is very, very important. During 11 plant, the thrust area also moved towards the integrated watershed management development program, drought prone areas program, integrated watershed management program. And you know, you know, Manrega and all National Rural Employment Guarantee or program also are being linked with this type of technique. Uh, they are also looking the cluster approach so that the broader vision of natural hydrogeographical unit covering the 4000 to 10,000 hectare can be taken into consideration. The program would be implemented by dedicated institutional agency at a state and uh, central level. I would like to uh, tell you that the diversification of economy is a very, very important 
and apart from diversification of economy, they are also looking the diversification of agriculture, you know, dryland farming, so that the uh, more alternative livelihood security uh, can be generated in the area. The period, uh, the project period is proposed in the range of five to seven years in three district phase, preparatory watershed work and consolidation phase. The consolidation phase includes livelihood activity, marketing, processing and value addition is very, very important in this case. I would like to quote here the drought prone areas program and it is a very old program it started in during the fourth five year plan and covering the 972 blocks of 183 districts of 16 states covering like Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir. What I would like to bring before you is the whole uh, uh, semi-arid region, you know, uh, 7.46 lakhs square kilometer, you know, total area. Desert development program, you know, hot, arid, non-sandy area, 75 percent they are covering, hot, arid, sandy area, 100 percent and cold, arid, area 100 percent they are covering and they are taking the 235 blocks in 40 districts in 7 states of our country. I would like to mention about the very important program, the watershed development program, particularly Professor, you will remember the Professor Hanuman Rao committee constituted by Ministry of Rural Development. They studied the all pros and cons of the program and all over the country and recommended a common set of guideline objective particularly for a strategy and expenditure norm for the watershed development program with modifying. But I would like to mention that the very well known program you know coming through community like a Johards in Rajasthan in it is in eastern Rajasthan in the semi arid region but Johards you know is a earthen dams constructed by the people themselves, the one very important person like Rajendra Singh, he organized all people, you know, earlier there were no much farming, uh, uh, net zone area was so less, less than 10 percent, 15 percent, you know, but now we have 75 percent because they are able to check the rainfall and, uh, and now the rainfall they are using in the water harvesting ponds and they are using here you can see the Johar near village Gopalpura in Rajasthan, the one photograph and you can understand type. So we have a lot of increase of the productivity of the area, you know, and such type of the uh, uh, also you can find in the, uh, uh, in Maharashtra, you know, you will remember this the uh, uh, Rele Gaon Sindhi experience of Anna Hajare ji or many villages we know you can find this the such type of the water harvesting structure. It is a 200, uh, it is a, a very low cost and uh, you know many dry rivers they became the perennial also. Here you can see this the how they are moving towards the increasing the forest cover in our Rauli mountain. They are uh, diversifying the economy and tobacco cultivation and so that they can get the more income. Here you can see the khejri tree, you know, they are growing in that area. Haryali is another very important program and I would like to mention that this is a panchayat is becoming very, very important, you know, promoting the imp uh, here, encouraging the community towards sustained community action and the land, water, vegetation, these all are combined together and human and livestock population crops are being focused, DDS, Desert Development Scheme and finally I would like to tell you the Desert National Park is a very, very important, you know, uh, having this third desert is the rich fauna and fauna uh, in this region, region. So these are also considered as a islands of prosperity in the desert area. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us this uh, session. Friends, we will be back soon and would we'll be discussing on another topic in our forthcoming session. Till then, take care. Goodbye.